Welcome to the special meeting of the Larkspur City Council. It's Monday, uh, June 29th, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, we are, of course, still in the middle of the um, shelter-in-place order from the Public Health Department, so we are meeting um, remotely. All of the information about how to join us and how to participate um, is available on the City of Larkspur website. Um, our city clerk, Allison, is here in the audience managing the um, comments and also the emails. And the instructions on how to submit an email uh, it, during the meeting is also available on our website. So I'd like to call the meeting to order um, right now at 6.02. And we have, dis we have uh, set aside two hours for this conversation um, and uh, hope to hear from a lot of people. So the first thing is um, our uh, roll call, please. Council Member Candell? I am here. Council Member Helmer? Here. Council Member Paulson? Here. Vice Mayor Haroff? Here. Mayor Webb? I am here. Great. So the second item on our agenda is public comment. And public comment at this period of time is for members to address City Council regarding items that are not on the agenda and that are not listed on other parts of our consent calendar which we don't have tonight because we have one item on our agenda, which is a public workshop. So um, you can approach, raise your hand in, the, um, uh, in this program and Allison will recognize you and you have three minutes to give public comment on items that are not on the agenda. And what I'd like to ask you to do is just to state your name and the city in which you're calling from. And remember, and I know many of you have participated a lot in city council meetings, the council, because it has not been agendized, does not um, have the opportunity to discuss it or talk about it uh, until it's actually an agendized item. So let's get started. Allison, anyone in the audience would like to make a public comment on an item that is not on the agenda? Thank you. Our first public comment will be Robbie Powelson. Robbie, it's your turn to speak to the council. Welcome, Robbie. Hi there, thank you. Yeah, this is uh, Robbie Palliser from the TAM Equity Campaign, and um, I'm just following up from you know our, our protest the other week at the Drake statue. Um, we're going to be submitting a petition to you of twelve with about twelve hundred signatories uh, about the statue and around uh, de deinvesting from the Central Marin Police Authority. I think a lot of people don't understand that the Central Marin Police Authority actually has a checkered past when it comes to people of color and people with um, behavioral health issues. Uh, in 2018, um, a uh, officer, Jose Vega, uh, was one of several police officers responding to a mental health call in Corte Madera, uh, where, where I'm from. And he while the other officers used tasers, uh, Jose Vega used a gun. And right now there's a young man who has a bullet in his spine to this day. Um, not only that, back in 2016, um, a man who was coming out of the uh, psychiatric ward um, died in a struggle with uh, Central Marin Police Authority officers along with Marin County Sheriff. And I think what we have to understand with this conversation about Sir Francis Drake and, um, you know, inequity in our communities is that uh, reinvesting money from police departments has to be part of this conversation as we discuss, um, you know, addressing these symb symbols of racism like Sir Francis Drake, which was originally, and we have paper clippings from 1950 that show that Sir Francis Drake was used as a way to celebrate white history, white people coming and colonizing this land. And um, I think we, it's, it's a multi-pronged um, campaign we have to do. So thank you. Thank you, Robbie, for your comments. Um, Allison, okay. we have the, the comment timer um, going. My screen just shows it uh, blank, or it says just the symbol. We can do that, Madam Mayor. Just thinking, we, do we have a lot of uh, people? We have a lot of people with raised hands for the comments to items that are not on the agenda. I think we should probably limit it to three like we normally do. Yes, at this time we have three people in line um, in the speaker queue. Okay. 
Um, and we'll just remind, um, we'll start with Sophia Hussein. It's your turn for public comment. Welcome, host Sophia. Hi, um, I'm Sophia. Um, I grew up in Marin County, pretty close to the statue of Sir Francis Drake, and I attended the recent protest um, to attempt to bring attention to this issue and wanting to rename this um, for Sir Francis Drake Boulevard Mean Walkway. Um, with this time, I also wanted to just talk about San Quentin for a moment. Um, I'm sure you've all read how cases are spiking in San Quentin prison. Um, today, I heard that cases reached over a thousand people. Um, and they're reporting that guards have just stopped showing up to work or calling in sick because they're also afraid for their lives. Um, so this is a huge, huge public health issue. Prisons are already a huge public health issue without a pandemic. Um, but I really, really want to encourage everyone in my community, the people of Larkspur, the people of Marin County, to advocate Gavin Newsom to grant these prisoners clemency so that this doesn't become a death sentence for people who are already really, really suffering in really violent and terrible conditions. There's no way to do social distancing in prison. Um, so I can yield my time to the next speaker, but I just wanted to say that this is a huge issue and you know whether or not you're a prison abolitionist, COVID in San Quentin will affect the rest of Marin County as well. Thanks. Thank you, Sophia. Our next speaker. Can, can I ask a quick question? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, is Guy on the call with us today? Uh, yes, he is. Uh, and this, I guess, either to Sky or to, to Dan, with the San Quentin issue, do we have any uh, authority to do anything about, I mean, I know it's kind of in our in our neighborhood, but my understanding is we don't have the authority to do anything in San Quentin. Is that accurate? Uh, who, uh, go ahead, Sky. Sure, yeah, I'm sure Dan has additional comments about this, but um, the city does not have any regulatory authority over uh, the operations at San Quentin that is um, entirely under the purview of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, uh, which is a division of the state government. Um, the city council um, therefore doesn't have any uh, direct authority over operations there. Uh, I know that there have been discussions about some aspects of the prison and the city in the past, but it, nothing that happens there really is under the direct control of the city. Okay, thank you. Uh, Allison, do we have another uh, speaker? Yes, our next public comment is from Caitlin Bishop. Hello, Caitlin. Hello, council members. Uh, thank you very much for holding this meeting this evening. Um, I would just like to voice my support for the removal of the Francis Drake statue at the Larkspur Ferry Building. Um, over the last few years, we've seen uh, the removal of statues that have come under a lot of controversy and over uh, across the United States. And Marin County isn't immune to any of the controversy. We have a statue that's and a main artery through Marin County that's um, named after a very well-known slave trader, rapist, and murderer. So I'm suggesting tonight that uh, through the next few months of discussions, we start incorporating uh, more voices from the Miwok tribe and getting a lot more, get a lot more feedback from them on what they would like to rename the street, what, not, what they would like to do with the statue. Um, it really seems like a very easy decision. Um, and considering that other parts of the world are, are tearing down their statues as well, and even in England, where Francis Drake was born, his hometown, um, they've started the process of taking down their statues because they don't want to be associated with somebody who uh, committed such atrocities. So um, I'd like to yield the rest of my time and um, I would just like to recommend again that we incorporate a lot of different voices into this decision and we incorporate the Miwok tribe especially, um, considering that they were the first ones to encounter Francis Drake and um, really suffer under his, under his reign. So thank you very much. Thank you, Caitlin. And I'd just like to remind everyone else who'd like to speak, this is the time on the agenda to make public comment for items that are not on the agenda. So you're, we're gonna have a long conversation about, about um, the uh, public art that's in the Larkspur Landing area, but this is for items that are not on the agenda. 
Is there someone else who would like to speak? Thank you. Our next public speaker is B. U. B. It's your turn for public comment. Hello, B. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um. Sorry. Yeah. I I might be working the next time you have your meeting, so I just wanted to share my thoughts since um we have all your attention. Um. And this I is thought, for, this is for items not on the agenda, right? Um, when when is the uh, statue going to be discussed? It's coming up in a few in a matter of minutes, so just hang on. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I just hold on until and I'll and I'll stand mine and, and I'll speak when that's. Sure. Okay. I, thank you. I think I think Allison in the Zoom thing has to sort of put you into the waiting line again, <laughs> as we all learn. Is there anyone who is here to speak to items that is not about the statue? I'll just say that. Okay, it looks like we have Julia. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, great, thank you so much. Um, I think the timer might still be going for B, but that's okay, it should be quick. Um, I have a few points I'd like to make, and I think we're kind of hearing a lot of different um, comments that are sort of getting at what I think actually has uh, a similar thread. So we're hearing issues about um, police brutality. Um, we're also hearing concerns about the statue and we're hearing concerns about San Quentin. And I think in all three of these um, situations, what we're seeing is we're seeing um, a community that is overall um, very, very well off and is thriving and is lucky to have um, the resources that we do, um, reckoning with sort of some of the um, sort of people in our community um, that are and the history of our community that's a little bit darker. Um, I grew up in Marin County um, in the unincorporated area. I went to Marin County Public Schools um, and I really didn't learn very much about any of these issues um, and I thought that issues sort of facing facing people of color, um, facing prisoners, facing all of this was sort of separate from um, from our little uh, bucolic Marin um, and I was very lucky to experience that in my own life. Um, but I would really encourage um, council members to look at what sort of bold leadership in this moment looks like. I understand um, that you all may have limited authority to um, set specific policies related to some of these issues, um, but I think it's still worth understanding the ways in which you can um, voice sort of what is in the best interest of all Marin residents, um, regardless of the exact extent of your authority. Um, and uh, I would just encourage the council members to um, really understand the history and like show leadership within the community um, in these very, very difficult and scary moments um, for the luckier and more privileged members of our community and for those who are not as lucky and privileged. Um, so I'd like to yield the rest of my time um, and thank you all for coming into the conversation about Drake and all the other conversations happening in the future with um, open minds and um, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Julia. Madam Mayor. Yes, ma sir. May I just thank Julia for her thoughtful comments? Yeah. Um, it looks like we don't have any other hands raised uh, for matters that are not on the agenda. So um, I will bring it to, uh, it, is there anyone else? I just see B's hand raised and she's gonna speak on the uh, matter that's on the agenda. So now we'll open the public workshop. Um, the council will hold a public workshop to hear from the community about the public art located in Larkspur Landing. The council may give direction to staff at the conclusion of the workshop. I'd like to refer everyone to our agenda page uh, and look at uh, the ability for you to read the 12 public comments that were um, written and submitted by email in advance and they're available on our, our page. You can read them. I sort of summarized them. I'm not going to read all 12 because they are available um, summary is sort of in about four categories. There was um, an idea that this is public art and a, whiz a whimsical piece of art, not intended to be a monument to Sir Francis Drake. I'm reiterating what some of these public comments were. Done by a local artist in an abstract manner. The second was that removing it would be a sign, um, a demonstration of inclusiveness by uh, our community. A third theme um, was to, ch to change the name um, of the statue and to recognize the artist for um, his work. And lastly, I'd like to thank um, one of our, our uh, contributors, 
Ms. Stimak for her personal and very meaningful comments that she wrote there. And they are available to read under the public comments section. So let's launch into this. Um, I would like to have the city manager give us a, um, a short uh, manager's report about our subject. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll be very brief. I know if folks want to have this conversation with you. Uh, most of the city's records and files have to do with the actual installation of, this, of the statue. Uh, the city was required to get a permit from uh, the regulatory agency for uh, the bay uh, so that they could uh, install something that, that close to the water. So we have extensive files about that. We do have some information uh, in letters and newspaper clippings that give us a reasonable understanding of the history from the time. In addition, I had a chance to speak to the artist, Dennis Patton, and I believe the mayor also had that opportunity prior to this session. Um, so here's some of the basic facts that uh, we discern from uh, going through the material. And around uh, the year 1988, Dennis Patton began presenting to folks in Larkspur the concept of a statue uh, to honor Sir Francis Drake. Um, but he was very open that he was basing that work on uh, one of his prior works, a wooden sculpture of Don Quixote that had existed near the uh, Civic Center and had uh, been burned down at one point or damaged at one point. Um, and those I understand who um, can recall that wooden sculpture will tell you that they bear a lot of similarity. Then uh, after uh, Mr. Patton began making these presentations, one of the former, then current, now former council members, Michael Warnham, and some others formed the Sir Francis Drake Fundraising Committee. The Marine Community Foundation acted as the fiscal agent for that fundraising committee. And that committee raised uh, the funds to pay for the, the artwork, uh, the sculpture, and um, arranged with the city so that the city would accept the art as public art. And the city agreed to uh, accept the statue and install it in the location where it is today. Uh, and when the city uh, contributed going through the processes necessary to get the approvals for that. And then the statue was dedicated and uh, made part of uh, the landscape in November of 1990. Um, those are the essential facts that we have in the file. Everything else we have in the file, like I said, is much more about the actual technical details of installing the statue. Um, we've put this on the agenda, both as a uh, conversation but also as a workshop the council has the latitude to give direction to staff at the conclusions should it so desire and with that madam mayor turn it back to you thank you does it, any of the council members madam mayor, can I? yes go ahead scott i i have a, a question i'm not sure exactly who this is to maybe dan um uh, vice mayor haroff and myself were at a similar meeting about the naming of uh, or changing the name of sir francis street boulevard uh, what came up in that meeting is a wide variety of um, histories of Sir Francis Drake. Some people, he's an awful person and he did all these things. Other people said he's not so bad. And at the end of his, his life, he became a really good person and he freed slaves and did these wonderful things. It would be great if we as a council had a, an agreed upon state of facts that we could all say, okay, we're going to agree this is what Sir Francis Drake did, was, anything like that, so that we're not arguing about whether he did this or didn't do that. Is there some way that we can get that, uh, that agreed upon state of facts, some, some reliable source that can be provided to all of us that we can all say, yes, okay, we, believe, we, we agree that's reliable and we're going to take that as, as, as fact. Well, I guess we could find some of the Drake historians. There have been many that have submitted um, comments. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not near or knowledgeable about who they are, but history is a muddled and messy business, you know, and there are often ways it's told by one, um, one uh, researcher and historian and told a different way by another. So I'm not sure how we vet that, but it's a good question. 
maybe we can bring that up and see if somebody in the audience has an interest, has um, some skills in which we can help vet that. Are there are any other questions? Until we get started? Okay. So what we usually how these workshops really kind of work is they're li really listening sessions. Um, we uh, like to hear from as many voices as possible. And then um, we, we have a timer for three minutes like they did on Friday at the meeting. And then um, after many, most people have had a chance to speak or all the people have had a chance to speak, we'll bring it back to further discussion by the city council and sort of close the comment period. But this is gonna be an ongoing process as it will be uh, at, as we move through the summer and you will have plenty of opportunity to continue to submit your ideas to us. So it looks like we have B still waiting in line. <laughs> Thank you, B, for, uh, is she still there? Yeah, she's, she, um, it looks like uh, B is still there with her hand raised and I had asked her to wait until this moment. So let's have B. Thank you. Um, Thank you everyone for gathering and, and welcoming public comments. Um, so I'm a, a business owner and resident in uh, San Rafael and Larksburg. Um, sorry, I, I work in Larksburg as well. Uh, so in regards to the statue, I originally thought it was Don Quixote. So I was curious, so I looked it up and found out like, I would say in 2007 that it was, um, created by the artist, Mr. Patton, and it said on his website that it was indeed Sir Francis Drake. And then I, and so I was really appalled to see that we had such a giant statue of Sir Francis Drake, given his history, his limited time in Marin, and um, of course what, um, what slavers in general um, represent. Um, and, and so, I, I saw this that there were going to be there was going to be a protest and so I was so excited actually because I was like wow other people feel the same way I do after all these years of being really appalled at seeing that large structure um, and and then I went to the protest and the coast me walks were there they were really happy to see us there and they were like hey yeah we'll put you know a different piece of artwork up there if if that's welcome and so um i did go to the most recent discussion on the stuff the um the naming of the road and they're going to have a learning committee in in answer to your question mayor um and they're inviting the coast miwoks to participate in that historical um you know, review of the history of Mr. Drake, who apparently what I'm hearing is who was only here for a few months. So, <laughs> so um, all that to say, I'm in support of the, the uh, structure coming down and definitely wanting to encourage involvement of the Coast Miwoks in, in order to embrace the culture that has long been erased in our county and that could really use um some reverence um in in moving forward in towards looking at um creating a more racially equitable future for marin um a more um uh, a more balanced view of our history as you were pointing out Ms. um madam mayor that um our history often reflects only parts of the story and so i appreciate you saying that very much and I will, um, and I also, and just quickly, I wanted to say that um, since San Quentin is a public health issue, I would, I, I wanted to uplift the um, previous voice. Thank you. Thank you, B. Um, so, Allison, I think what would be helpful is if we just list the next maybe two caller uh, speakers so that they can get prepared. Um, okay. Madam Mayor, can I make one comment? Sure. Uh, can I just ask that for the speakers, it would be helpful for me uh, if you would tell us if you are in favor of uh, either um, leaving the statue in the name alone, leaving the statue up but renaming it, or taking the statue down, and if taking the statue down, what you propose in its place. That would, that would be helpful for me anyway in, in trying to make a decision. Thank you. If they know that, if they've, if they've already yeah. reached that idea. But you're welcome. Correct. Press an opinion if it doesn't meet all of those criteria too. 
So let's see, it looks like it's next. Oh, and I, just a reminder that it's really helpful for us also if you, you don't have to give us your address, but just the city in which you live. So who's next? Our next speaker will be Joan Lundstrom. And as a heads up, following that will be Lucina Vidari. Uh, for now, Joan Lundstrom, it's your turn for public comment. Welcome, Joan. Okay. Um, thanks very much. Uh, I've lived in Larkspur about 50 years, been on the council uh, eight uh, sessions and mayor some seven times. So I, re I do remember this uh, very vividly. Uh, and this particular statue is in a very different category. Nobody made any, had any discussion about honoring Sir Francis Drake or even thinking about Don Quixote. It was an artist coming forward who was uh, a one-of-a-kind artist and a one-of-a-kind uh, type of statue. And it was, we deliberately did not spend any public money. It was all private money for this. Uh, Dennis had built a number of large statues along the shoreline of different welded pieces and he offered to donate. Uh, there were never any plaques there was never any formal ceremony saying, we hereby christen you Sir Francis Drake. So here we are with a whimsical statue that's been called many different names. So I decided today to call Dennis because I remember actually going to a birthday party of his where he built a whole little village and then invited 500 people over out by Larkspur Landing. Anyway, what was his intent? So today, had long conversation with Dennis. By the way, his work is recognized in the Smithsonian as public art in America. And each of his statues is quite different. So he doesn't go along and, and cast a statue on a horse over here and, and somebody uh, enslaving somebody over there. He just does, does by hand and that is hand welded. So today he told me the statue had nothing to do with honoring Sir Francis Drake. The sculpture is about the event of discovering California and the quest for knowledge. He said his artwork is also a record of grooving and reflecting in the 70s in Marin, a great time of creativity. And by the way, some of his stuff was at Burning Man. He's a one of a kind guy. He would agree to the city of Larkspur renaming the statue, but he doesn't want Don Quixote and he doesn't want Sir Francis Drake. He'd like to have some idea that it's an adventure, an explorer, or part of, of uh, exploring ideas, and he would like to be part of a renaming committee. I think it's a, an amazing piece of one-of-a-kind public art, and that we preserve it. And by the way, uh, Dennis said he didn't realize Sir Francis Drake was such a bad dude. Thank you, Joan. Madam Mayor, may I ask a question? Sure. Joan, are you still on the line? Or is the question yeah. the speaker? Hi, Joan. Hi. Did you uh, hear the city manager's staff report at the beginning of this item? Yeah. Uh, how do you reconcile his comments regarding the public record as to the intent of the uh, well, image, image and placement of the statue. I, I think it morphed into, you got to name it something. But he's um, on the public record as, as yeah, stating, right. stating it was intended to be Sir Francis Drake. So how do you that, reconcile right. that with well, contradictory I, comments today? And I was surprised, actually, that Dennis said, well, it was, wasn't supposed to be Sir Francis Drake. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. I, I really was surprised at that. Thank you, Joan. Uh, that answers your question, Dan. This, I think it's uh, the next speaker, please. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Lucina Vidari, followed by Robbie Powelson. Welcome, Lucina. Hi, thank you. It's um, Ashley Lucina. Oh, sorry. That's okay. um, I just wanted to say really quick, I'll try to make it quick. Um, you know, it's a First of all, um, it's, it's a statue on Sir Francis Drake and, you know, 
no matter what you do, people are going to put two and two together and try to come up with the name for the statue. They're just going to call it Sir Francis Drake, no matter what you call it. Um, I think it's a reflection of the community. And I'm just wondering, you know, how are you going to explain Sir Francis Drake to your children? And, you know, what are you going to tell them? Um, I understand that a lot of people don't understand the history of Sir Francis Drake. Um, I happen to grow up on the history of it. It's kind of a strange thing. My father has a book called Drake at Olympoli, which I am actually almost finished um, digitizing for anybody who wants a copy. And basically, it kind of just gives you an idea that a lot of the writings about Drake um, were written by colonists. And you have to kind of read behind the lines. And they use words like plundered and attacked. And I don't know what that means to you, but... I actually looked up the word plundered and attack, and it means war and death, basically. And so it, you have to really, well, you don't have to dig anymore that hard, but you'll find plenty out there, and you kind of just have to really read between the lines because they, they will say, Drake attacked a village. Well, you know, attacked could mean a lot of things. And bottom line is, um, there's just a lot of chaos. It was chaotic. It meant destruction for the natives around the world that he traveled to, around South America, around Africa, around... I mean, we're not sure what happened when he got here. The documents, some of them have been lost. We don't know if he killed or not. Um, you almost think that you have to go by his pattern that he did, but I'm not sure why he would have spared them when he was here. Um, but, you know, that's something to be maybe um, discovered. I don't know. I just think taking the Sir out of Francis Drake is really healing to the Native American community who, whose, our ancestors encountered him. Our Coast Miwok ancestors encountered him. And the, the horrible legacy has survived in our family and i've heard horrible things all my life about drake and i couldn't believe that there was sir francis drake in the statue when i finally did see it one day and i highly suggest that you consider that thank you thank you very much you're welcome there, there will probably be interest in the digitizing of that book um so you might want to share it if it's done later okay uh, we have, oh, Robbie Paulson. You're... Yes, our next speaker will be Robbie Paulson, followed by Shannon Hart. Welcome back, Robbie. Thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, Robbie Paulson, TAM Equity Campaign. I, I would, um, I want to bring it back to some of these. Uh, I have newspaper clippings from 1930 and 1950 that are around Sir Francis Drake. And it's interesting to actually think, why is Sir Francis Drake, this individual who was here for just a few months, why is he given so much space in the public sphere? And the big reason was because he was the first white Anglo-Saxon to come to Marin. It was a part of history, Marin's history, that was not a part of Mexican government that was here before us. It was not about um, Spaniards. It was not about indigenous people it was about white anglos which as you know during you know 1930s and 1950s anglo-saxon that was actually what we would call white today that was the dominant group um i think that it's a um as as far as symbols go it's a very powerful way that um we kind we naturalize or, or, or make marin county um be the the white place that it's so it's so commonly viewed as um it's a way that we um by making sure that you know we have a high school we have the statue we have the road all this this heritage is a way that we can make white anglo-saxon history um the the default when in fact marine county has a diverse history that includes people from that includes mexicans that includes indigenous people that includes um uh, African Americans, all the, every all kinds of shades of people, and I think that um, 
I'm just very excited to see um, all of this work being done to, to talk about these symbols and bring up that kind of history, the diverse history that we have here locally. Um, so I look forward to seeing the the statue be um, well, so a creative solution and and uh, you know, bring bring it bring it down. Thank you. Yeah, bring it down. That's that, that's what you need to hear. Bring it down. All right. Robbie, can I ask you if I wanted to learn more about the TAM Equity Project? Is there a website that's available or? Yeah, you can check us out on Facebook. Um, and I can, uh, I can follow up with an email. Okay, I just want to learn more about what your group is, um, your, the issues of your group. So I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, any, if any council member wants to jump in and ask a question of the speakers, the workshops are more loose, looser that way. So just either raise your hand or just jump in there. Um, uh, I just have a comment, Madam Mayor. Sure. Um, I uh, have paid close attention to things taking place over the over the last few months, uh, specifically regarding this issue. And I would hope that we could uh, put a lens on this that looks to the future, that focuses on values, that looks at the opportunity presented to us now especially with related to the message we send to the next generation and how we can re uh, help focus on, uh, I think comments were made earlier, uh, kind of blending the health issues that we're facing now with some of the values considerations we're talking about with this uh, agenda item. And I would hope we could bring those all together and, and look to the future with a, uh, a proactive message that uh, brings people together. Okay, well said. Um, the next two uh, speakers, Allison? We'll have Shannon Hart providing public comment now and phone number ending 1402, you are up next. Welcome Shannon, can you tell us where you live? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I'm in San Rafael. Welcome. Uh, thank you for this special workshop um, and allowing public comment. Um, I did submit a letter again, and I just, I'll just briefly kind of go over uh, three points that I would like to make. Um, and just to summarize it as you requested, I do support public art, um, and I would support keeping the sculpture and renaming and rededicating it. Um, along those lines, of from what I've been hearing from previous commenter, commenters, um, is the fact that I didn't even know this was Sir Francis Drake, and some of the other callers didn't either, um, because it doesn't have a face. It, this is an anonymous-faced sculpture. It is not a statue that commemorates or memorializes a specific person. Um, because it is a sculpture, um, and public art, uh, I support protecting it and not destroying it. Um, public art is meant to provoke thought and discussion and curiosity. And indeed, it, in fact, it has done this by the simple fact that we are here tonight. Um, and then, I, again, the, 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 the face is anonymous, um, which brings up to the mayor's point after she spoke to the artist, Mr. Patton, that it symbolizes more of an event than a person. And in, in fact, I think something that we are overlooking with this particular sculpture is that it is carrying um, a flag. And I believe that placing the flag there makes it more of an event than a memorial to a human, a man, a person. Um, and so it feels more to me as, I know in my letter I kept referencing Don Quixote because that's who I thought it was when I, seen it um, uh, living here in Marin for many, many years. Um, but I, it, it, I feel like it's even more of a, it's even, even that is ascribing something specific, a specific person where it is more of an adventurer or a, um, you know, wanderer or some kind of world traveler of some sort. So I would 
again, I would like to just support the renaming and the rededicating of it and um, just reiterate that it is public art. This is a sculpture, not a statue. And I don't believe in burning books and I don't believe in destroying public art. And uh, that's it, I'll yield back my time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shannon. And I'll just refer everyone to, um, if you go to our agenda, Shannon submitted a um, written letter and it's available for everyone to read under her last name, Hart. Our next caller is caller ending in 1402. And after that will be Anya Sriram. James Holmes, Larchburg. Hello, James. <laughs> Good evening, council members. Previously, I submitted written comments, which I asked the council to consider. Uh, I would like to add here that to do away with this art altogether would be an act of Talibanic fanaticism. Woke run wild. To take it down would also likely submit Larkspur to widespread derision and disrepute for capitulating to fanaticism. And it would be a slap in the face of both the talented local artist who created and donated it and the generous Larchper citizens who paid for its installation. To those who demand that the statue come down, we should simply reply, the Miwok welcomed Drake. Let Larchper do likewise. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Holmes. And yeah, get, uh, stay on the line, please. Mr. Holmes? Yeah, hi. Yeah, James. Yes, yeah, yeah, fine. I'm on, on the line. Okay, stay on the yeah, line. Hi, James. So you're, you're pretty clear about yeah. not wanting to take it down. How do you feel about renaming? Uh, I, don't, I don't feel strongly uh, about uh, renaming. If it is the sense of the community that it ought to be uh, renamed and uh, if it will preserve the statue, uh, I would have no uh, objection to, uh, to, to renaming. But as I say, there is no, there is no uh, uh, plaque or, or other designation, but if uh, someone uh, wants to uh, uh, add a plaque to it, so designating it, I personally would not object to that if that would uh, bring a measure of repose to uh, those who are concerned uh, about it. Uh, I, I do wonder if <laughs> that would really satisfy uh, certain elements, but uh, I would not object. Thank you. Madam Mayor, may I ask a question to Mr. Holmes? Sure. We're giving Mr. Holmes a lot of time here, so let's make sure we're being consistent with our time. Uh, what, what, James, what would be your message to the young people who are asking for us to consider change in the context of uh, our identity as well as other issues related to uh, inequities that might take, be taking place? Uh, that are taking place in society? Oh, well, as I said, I, the Miwok welcomed uh, Drake and I think Larkspur should do likewise. Uh, I, I really think our identity should focus uh, on the future and perhaps the immediate past and certainly the present and the problems in the present. Uh, and uh, I, I tend to be perhaps a bit uh, less uh, concerned about uh, 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 injustices in the 16th century. I think William Faulkner said that uh, the past is is uh, always with us, but uh, I think uh, even Faulkner might agree that uh, saying that about the 16th century uh, would be pushing it a bit. Thank you. I think we'll move on. We have about 10 people with hands raised, so I want to make sure everybody has a chance to contribute. Our next caller is Anya Shriram, and you'll be followed by Lauren Buckley Miller. Welcome, Anya. Hi. Hi, thanks. Uh, I'm Anya. I'm from uh, Nevada. Um, I just wanted to very quickly establish what I am sensing as a pattern that the people who are asking to leave it up are uh, focusing on either intent, which is uh, uh, either intent. Or um, the fact, I'm sorry, I just, I can't talk without talking about the fact that the last speaker just called it Talibanic to take it down. Like, he literally compared it to the Taliban. I just want to put that, I just want to put that into the air. Like, I really, that's important, uh, is that we know that that just happened. Um, and so now I'm going to move forward. 
uh, and talk about the fact that to focus on intent and not the impact that the statue has had, um, which is that it's a harsh reminder of, you know, what we have let the status quo be. And it's also that regardless of the intention that the, you know, the original artist had, the statue literally iconizes Sir Francis Drake, who, you know, we can talk about maybe the good things that he did do, but we can also talk about all the bad that he did to a group of people who did actually, as one speaker said, discover California. Sir Francis Drake did not discover California. California was notoriously discovered before then. So, you know, to say these things like taking it down is Talibanic, to say that, you know, it's a reminder of how he discovered you know, California, like those kinds of statements seem really absurd to me. And I, I just want to establish that I do not think renaming the statue is enough um, of a statement, especially because uh, some of you council members keep talking about how you, like, what is the statement we want to give to our, you know, future generations. And as part of that future generation, I do not think renaming the statue is is enough. I, um, you know, it just, to keep it up it, because of people who are saying that taking it down is Talibanic to say, to keep it up for reasons like, you know, a positive intent when the impact has actually been so overwhelmingly negative. I think, yeah, that's that's what I think. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Anya. Scott, oh wait, stay on the line, Anya, or here, just in case Councilmember Candel has a question. Uh, yeah, Anya, I, I just had a quick question for you. Um, sure. In your opinion, if this statue had never been named Sir Francis Drake, and it was a statue just as it was, uh, would it just still be effective to you? If I'm completely honest, yes, because the statue is not wearing pants. So if we put everything aside, <laughs> I think there is still like a clear issue with it. So yeah, as someone who was at the protest and was around that statue for a fair number of hours, uh, yeah, put some pants on the statue. <laughs> That's the first I've heard it's not wearing pants. I have to go to look at that. Thank you. Oh, there's, there's, that's not, that's not the only issue with it. But the lack of pants is actually a problem. Oh, I do. Yes. Well, thank you, Anya, for your comments. Madam Mayor. Yes. May I just make a statement? I, th I think the, it's interesting to hear all the comments trying to define the problem. Hmm. Um, I think there, I think generally there is an image of a conquistador, which attracts all sorts of interpretations. And I'm open uh, to hearing what uh, the public has to say about uh, just the, there are all kinds of st narratives here that people are trying to create. And I just want to hear about the general image and identity that this uh, presents. As, as the gateway to Marin, so uh, I'm interested in that. Okay, maybe some other rest of the uh, commenters will speak to that issue too. Um, isn't it conquistador though? That's Spanish, right? And he was English, so I don't know what the term is for the English. Anyway, uh, who's next? It's Lauren. Yes, our next speaker will be Lauren Buckley Miller, followed by Stephanie Grader. Welcome, Lauren. Hi, thank you so much. Um, it's actually Lauren Brown and I'm calling from the Presidio, but I was born and raised in Larkspur. I went to Basage, Kent and Redwood. And um, yes, we've gotten to know each other over the last couple of weeks. I started the petition June 8th to rename Sir Francis Drake Boulevard. And I've just been very thrilled by the momentum behind the movement so far. So I'm just calling to talk about um, my hopes and dreams of removing the statue. And I just wanted to make you aware of a couple different um, articles that have come about since this movement has started. Um, on June 23rd, there was a New York Times opinion piece written by a local historian who I have connections to and I'm happy to connect you to. His name is Richard White. And he wrote, this monument to white supremacy hides in plain sight. And it's about the prayer book cross in Golden Gate Park that has historical ties to Sir Francis Drake. And that opinion piece explicitly highlights what Drake's history is, as well as what he stands for in terms of being a white supremacist. So I wanted you guys to be aware of that. I'm happy to email it to you. There was also something circular, circulating around on the Sir Francis Drake 
Facebook page and it's from the 1950s and it basically states that Sir Francis Drake Boulevard was specifically chosen to honor the first white man to touch Rin Shores, which pretty much indicates a substantive foundation in white supremacy. Um, so again, it's just, I'm trying to create all these connections between why this figure was purposely put into Marin. I think it was really meant to send a message to the community. Um, maybe not necessarily that we're totally all rooted in white supremacy, but that is definitely like part of the foundation. Um, and then the other piece that I think you guys um, should start to research is a novel called, or it's a book called Thunder Go North, The Hunt for Sir Francis Drake, Fair and Good Bay. And I was just very enthralled by it because it's um, a book that basically disputes that Sir Francis Drake ever even touched foot on the shores of Marin. And so for people defending the artist who is now saying that he's trying to memorialize an event, that event might have never even taken place. So I just, I really feel like, again, um, for to echo off Scott Kendall's sentiments, like we should really get behind some facts here so that we can make some arguments as to why this was put in place and how it is justifiable to rotate art. I mean, this is a statue. It doesn't mean that it has to be there forever. We can put it somewhere else and make other monuments to, you know, people like the Coast Me Walk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lauren. And, and I think that, and we have a couple of hands raised to just ask you some questions. Um, I would appreciate if you would uh, email those references because I think that uh, will answer um, what Scott Candell's initial question was, was about um, how we learn um, about who this, this person was. Exactly, um, yeah, no problem. Uh, Gabe, you had a question? Yeah, I did. Lauren, uh, first I want to thank you for starting the conversation, for pushing it along. Um, I, I just wanted to make a, a statement and also ask you a question. And I think my statement is I, I really believe that the five people on the council and everyone who's called in is really uh, would want to further social justice and our sense of community in Larkspur and Marin is somewhat rooted in social justice. So I really appreciate the conversation. Um, my question is maybe a little bit of a tangent. Uh, in, in contrast to taking down the statue, renaming the statue, could you speak a little bit more about an affirmative vision? What do you see in its place or what do you see as values you'd want to hand further to you know, the next generation, for example? Oh, thank you so much for that opportunity. I am humbled. I have been working with Lucina, who was on the call earlier, and she's a direct descendant of the Coast Miwok, and I would just like to uplift her voice and the voice of the Miwok community. And what's been going around is Lucina has actually tried to start a fundraiser so that they could um, have a statue that honors the Coast Miwok. I think that the underlying efforts of this movement is to have all future um, Marin residents and children growing up in Marin um, have a strong historical um, knowledge of the caretakers who came here before us. And so I would just be so thrilled if we could consult Lucina and um, some of her constituents so that they could see their hopes and dreams come true in terms of having a Coast Miwok sculpture um, dedicated to their, their ancestors. Thank you, Lauren. One last Thank question, you. Scott, and we have 10 people in line. So let's, um, if Lauren, Lauren, are you still there? Are you, did you yeah. want to learn something? Uh, yeah, sir, Lauren, just, just, just real quick. Clearly, this is not the only place in Larkspur where we can put a statue. You know, if we want to honor certain people, we could do that in other places. If we take uh, as true that the statue is not of Sir Francis Drake, uh, and we were going to potentially rename this statue so it was not a uh, an honor to uh, Sir Francis Drake. Is the statue itself offensive to you or is your issue more that we should have more more statues honoring Miwok uh, as opposed to this is offensive? Thank you. Um, I do actually find the statue to be offensive for the fact that you know, it has explicitly been stated that it is dedicated to Sir Francis Drake, but to me with the, the sword and the flag, it clearly shows the ideals of a colonizer. 
Um, and to, again, like have be, people being ferried into Marin and their first few sites of Marin County are San Quentin Prison and then this giant 30 foot sculpture of a colonizer conquistador. It just, to me, it, it just stri has this underlying a tone of being very unwelcoming. So, all yeah, right, just even with his Thank you. sword. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, let's move to, is it Stephanie who's next, Allison? Yes, Stephanie Grader, it's your turn for public comment, followed by caller and again 5632. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi, Hi. thank you for um, taking my uh, statement. Um, I, am, I grew up in Fairfax, California. I have a PhD in cultural anthropology and I'm about to begin um, a professorship in, uh, in Latin American Studies and Anthropology at the University of Arizona, but I'm currently quarantining here with my family who still lives here. And um, I went to Sir Francis Drake High School. So as an alumni of that, um, of that school, I've been thinking a lot about this issue. And um, I actually wanted to just reiterate the point that the last caller just made before she got off that um, as a cultural anthropologist, we think a lot about meaning and sim symbols. And I think she's absolutely right that even if you strip the name, um, it stands very clearly for a male uh, European explorer and is a symbol of colonialism. So I don't think there's a way to take away that, especially the first thing that um, people arriving to Marin County on the ferry encounter, it's very much a symbol of white settler colonialism. There's no way to change that. Um, I will leave it to other people who are current residents to decide what to do with the statue, perhaps also the artist as well, but I think that its placement, no matter what, how you change the name, it, it conveys the same meaning, no matter what. Um, I also um, wanted to reiterate the point of being in touch with historians, um, as well as um, other uh, people aware of the history of Marin County, such as the um, Miwok individuals who are participating. Um, I think Professor Richard White, who's not just a local historian, but um, a two-time Pulitzer nominee um, and uh, esteemed professor from Stanford University is, it sounds like a really great person to consult with. Um, I um, have been emailing uh, various historians who have written about Drake and the book that keeps getting mentioned by them for a very comprehensive overview of his history is um, written by Harry Kelsey um, and his book is called The Queen's Pirate. But there are a lot of books about him, but as other callers have mentioned, there's a ways in which history was interpreted differently depending on the author, their background, and what they wanted to see in that history. So I would do a very careful overview and consult historians and other people who are very involved in this history to understand which authors actually provide a really um, credible viewpoint uh, and consider him for his deeds rather than how they want to interpret that history. And then I think my last point would just be to reiterate what other people have said that I think for this to be a really meaningful event, whatever happens with the statue is to also combine this with really um, concrete material policy changes that uh, support social justice and racial equality and economic equity in the county. So I'll end there. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Madam Mayor, I just want to thank Stephanie for her really uh, well considered comments. Thank you. Uh, looks like whoever ends in 5632 telephone number, you can introduce yourself now. Hi, uh, my name is Noelle. I'm a resident in San Anselmo, a longtime Marin County resident. Um, I'm voicing my support of taking down the Sir Francis Drake uh, statue in Larkspur. I think monuments are extremely important and represent where we are from. So to have a slave owner and trader standing tall at one of the entrances of our county uh, is a pretty bad look. Uh, I also want to follow up on what Anya said a few calls ago. Whether it's a sculpture, public art, statue, that doesn't matter. What matters is the artist specifically says it's Sir Francis Drake. There really shouldn't be a debate about what it is at this point. I'm not here to disrespect the artist. I'm here to say, if you're going to put up any type of replica of Sir Francis Drake, then you are honoring him, whether you like to or not. 
Um, renaming the work of art doesn't change what it was and it doesn't change the effect it had and will continue to have if it stays standing. Marin County should be proactive in dismantling the whitewashing of history, particularly, particularly in our own county. So please take the statue down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our oh. next commenter will be Yavar Amidi, followed by Julia. Welcome, you are. Salam alaikum. My name is Yavar Amidi. I'm a community organizer here in the county. Uh, I just want to say um, it, I was just very disturbed to hear that uh, Islamophobic and racist comment earlier. And that was just really, really uh, uncalled for. And doesn't make any sense to say that people demanding to remove a racist statue a nod to white supremacy and compare them to that. So this statue is a symbol of white supremacy. We were involved in the successful campaign to remove the nod to the Confederacy, the Dixie name in another part of Marin County. Um, this name will be removed and this statue will be removed. We're just trying to help you all be on the right side of history and we know you all uh, will be, right? So Mr. Hilmer, um, I understand. Even if they change the name, sir, just to answer previous question, right? It would still be offensive. He is a conqueror, a murderer, uh, and to, you asked what is the name for a conquistador in English, it's a murderer. And that's exactly what he was. And he killed slaves in brutal ways, he was a rapist, and all of this is documented. So when we talk about the Miwok, Marin County, Marin is the name of Chief Marin, the baptismal name given to Chief Quikmuse, which was a Miwok chief that resisted the Spanish imperial conquest of Marin County and was baptized at the mission in San Rafael and also spent time at the mission in San Francisco. You guys want to talk about, let's find other people. Well, the Mount Tamil Pius room in his library, um, people like Lucina Vidalry, Olam Pauli, all of the information exists about the Miwok. The people exist. Marin County has chosen to have these nods to white supremacy and it's now going to be removed. Um, because there's no longer uh, a time for us to debate about it. The debate has been going on for 155 years or since Marin County was incorporated. Now people are saying, oh, that Black Lives Matter and these other national movements are bringing it to the fore about the structural inequity. Well, don't worry, we're moving on those fronts as well. But these symbols to white supremacy must fall and they will shortly. They're falling all around the world. All of this is a replication of roads must fall when in South Africa, black Africans led the way for this. Many years ago, they started taking statues down. Now we see it happening in the South. We see it happening in England. A point I want to make about this to leave you, I hope I'm not antagonizing, but the point is that the European colonizers who undoubtedly committed a genocide against the Miwok and native people here, and undoubtedly committed a genocide against African peoples, which we refer to as the Middle Passage, the Middle Genocide, right? All of their statues will fall. The sooner they fall, the better you all look. Not that this is for optics, but you're all politicians. The sooner you all, you all act, the better you look. And if they remove Drake's statue from his hometown in Plymouth before you all do it here, it'll look very bad for Larkspur. Thank you so much for your time. Salam alaikum. Peace be upon you. Thank you, Yavar. Thank you. Uh, and Madam Mayor, I just want to say I, I'm uh, thinking about future generations. This is important. Julia, you're next. Hi, um, thanks so much. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Um, thanks for giving me a, a chance to talk about this topic specifically. Um, I think kind of speaking to the point about future generations, um, I'm in my early 20s, so I might not be, you know, in the marine education system anymore. Um, but maybe I can kind of speak to that perspective as somebody who sort of the stories that I learned about the world were the stories that Marin taught me. Um, and uh, so I, you know, I grew up in unincorporated Marin County, um, sort of around Mill Valley, I guess. Um, but it really took me traveling to uh, reservations in New Mexico and Louisiana to understand um, the history and the current situation of Native people in the U.S. because that was not something that I really learned at all in Marin. Um, I just kind of heard that, at, like, as a white person, I just kind of heard that Native people sort of disappeared mysteriously kind of around the same time that white people showed up, and that's why when you look around your elementary school classroom, they're all white and not Native, um, and that was just kind of the whole story, um, and it really, it took me until my 20s 
um, literally to know that there are living descendants of Miwoki in our community today, which I find just so like frustrating. Uh, like, how did I not know who the people are who uh, whose ancestors, you know, lived on the land that I grew up on and that I call home? Um, and I think um, our school, I mean, our schools basically still teach manifest destiny and our built environment does too. Um, and we kind of learn in school that that's, uh, that's a myth and that's, you know, what these people thought when they were coming across the U.S. Um, but we're still, like, this statue plays into the same story of Manifest Destiny. Um, and so I think regardless of what it's called, um, the physicality of the statue really does have a message with or without a plaque and a name. Um, when you have a presumably male figure uh, stepping forward from water with a flag and a sword and a shield that I'm not familiar with like English uh, breastplates but it looks a lot like the Spanish conquistador breastplates. Anyway like that image and the story that that tells regardless of the name is about claiming land with violence like it's literally holding a sword. Um, and it plays into these same myths that we all learn in school um, and that marginalized peoples in our country and in our county have been trying to tell us um, isn't the full story. Um, and so I don't think rededicating the sculpture changes the story that people learn or that people fit it into when they drive by. Um, and actually the sculpture really kind of allows us to forget the stories that don't fit into that narrative. Um, so I worry about kind of classifying the statue as offensive because I think that's a really loaded term that kind of fits into like, you know, PC, snowflake, like all of that. It's kind of another signal of that same flavor. Um, but the point is like, is this telling what we want it to tell? Sorry, I'm out of time, but thank you. Great. Thank you for your comments, Julia. Madam Mayor? Yes. Uh, I thanked Julia earlier, but I just, again, want to thank you for your well-considered comments. I think they're very uh, evocative. Uh, I think they speak to a, a future, and I think they, they also speak to a collective idea about what is taking place. Uh, next, it looks like Georgetta Beck. Okay. Hi, this is Georgetta Beck. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I live in Larkspur. I've lived in the area for over 36 years. I submitted a public comment, which you have on your website, and I don't want to read the whole thing, but I did want to make a couple of points. Um, number one, I believe that the sculpture is a stunning example of public art, which is in very short supply in Marin County. I thought it was of Don Quixote. Most everybody else I knew thought it was a Don Quixote. I'm told that it doesn't even resemble Sir Francis Drake, who I'm told was short and obese. There's no sign at or near the sculpture to say that it's Sir Francis Drake. Um, I would appreciate it if people would take some time to learn more about the artist, Dennis Patton, you can get a really good feeling for him by watching a very set entertaining 17 minute YouTube video entitled The World of Dennis Patton. In my opinion, he's an extremely accomplished and colorful artist and a Marin County treasure. In terms of proposed solutions to heal this divide, I have a couple of ideas. Number one, we, couldn't rena we could rename the statue if that's what people want to do. Or we could, or an addition, we could use this as a teaching moment and put a display near the sculpture, which among, un, among other things, details the history of Sir Francis Drake. But my real hope is that we use this controversy to spur the creation of more public art. Perhaps the area where the sculpture is situated could become a world-class sculpture park along the lines of the Shoreline Sculpture Park in Seattle. Marin has a treasure trove of artists. We could have each member of our diverse community select artists to create sculptures that speak to what they want to say. How fun and educational it would be for the public to attend each unveiling. We might even get San Quentin inmates to contribute. And what about a work by and about women? A diverse sculpture park 
could be a statement to the world that Marin County cares about all the people in their community and that what they say matters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Beck. Our next commenter is Stephen Allison. Hi, Stephen, welcome. Hi, thanks, you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Hi, so I'm Stephen Allison. I live in Sausalito. I'm a physician who works at Marin Health Medical Center in Green Bay. So thank you so much for hosting this forum. Uh, I support uh, taking down the statue. Uh, and uh, importantly in its place, I think there should be a real process, an effort to find an artist who represents a historically oppressed group to replace it. And that there should be an open process to exploring that. Because whatever you call the statue, I don't think renaming is going to work. It appears to be a colonial figure, and others have said that much more eloquently before me. Uh, the, the figure's planting a, f a flag. I don't think that that reflects our values. And I regret the glorification of colonialism in my own public education. And I've had to unlearn that. And now I'm raising children here in Marin, and I think that we can do better for them. I'll stop there. What do you, what do you think of Ms. Speck's suggestion that she just did about having, inviting other artists to contribute to, um, to that area and celebrating public art in a different way? What do you think of that idea? I have no problem with an art park. I think that's a great idea, but not this statue. I think this statue in particular, it in essence becomes the centerpiece of that art park. It's all in response to that. I actually would strongly encourage you that as far as a learning moment goes, the actual learning moment is around the removal of this statue and replacing it with the statue that would come, not from my suggestion as a white man who lives here in Marin, but from a historically underrepresented group. Okay, thank you. Um, looks like 7090, the phone call. Hi, um, I'd like to echo a lot of, of what has already been said this evening, um, including the pants issue. Will you just introduce yourself so we know uh, who we're speaking with? Hi, yes, um, my name's Caitlin. I did call in earlier. I um, missed the part where you were only covering things that weren't about the main issue, and I apologize for that. So I'm here to um, sort of more eloquently say my point. Okay. <laughs> Hi, um, I am Marin County uh, native, grew up in San Rafael. And uh, like I just said, I'd like to echo a lot of what has already been said this evening. Um, we've learned so far in a very short period of time that the statue was um, intentionally meant to commemorate the landfall of Sir Francis Drake, uh, which we've also learned may not have even happened, which is uh, pretty interesting and amazing, and I learned something new. Um, regardless, uh, if you've grown up or spent any time in Marin County, you know that there's not only an entire artery that runs through the county named for a known slave trader, murderer, and rapist, but also a statue that is essentially a symbol of white male settler colonialism, holding the sword and the flag and coming at you with a lot of violence. Call it what you want, remove the plaque, rename it what you want, but you can't over, you can't paint over violent white supremacy that it uh, essentially has come to represent for a lot of people. And that's why we are all asking you to remove it. Um, the Miwok welcomed Sir Francis Drake and then he decimated them. And I think a lot of people are upset uh, by the idea that the removal of these place names and icons is erasure and the rewriting of history, but by removing the statue and by renaming things like Sir Francis Drake Boulevard, Drake High School, et cetera, you're not rewriting history, you're allowing those who have come back from the brink of extinction and survived this horrible genocide that was put upon them to share their stories that have been suppressed in this county. And if you want more public art, call upon the Coast Miwok and all of the communities, our rich and colorful communities within Marin County. Um, there is very, there are so many amazing artists in this county that I have gotten the pleasure to know over time. And I think that they're able to offer a, a lot of amazing resources. So 
I'll end there. Um, thank you very much for your time. Yes, thank you for your comment. Looks like we have Mia. Madam Mayor. Yes. I would just like to comment on the last speaker and, and uh, many of, on many of the speakers. Um, I'm so inspired by the, the comments made this evening. Um, it reminds me of why I moved to Marin. I'll just leave it there. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Mia, welcome. Hi, um, this is Mia Lockritz. Uh, I live in Marinwood and I'm just echoing what a lot of other people have said um, that, and I've, I've lived in Marin my whole life, um, about 22 years. Uh, I think that this statue is offensive and should be taken down. Um, I think it's clear that, you know, once indigenous people have said that this statue is harmful and that they want to be taken down, that should be the end of the story. Um, and I also wanted to address some of the points I've been hearing, specifically Georgette's point um, about thinking that the art piece was Don Quixote. Um, and I think that that's kind of missing the point because the fact that we could all mistake the, sca the statue for Don Quixote or Sir Francis Drake doesn't really matter. It's, it's still representing the same thing. It's representing conquistadors. It's representing um, that history. And that is not a history that we want to glorify. Um, and I also don't think that adding any like relevant information would really solve that because it would still be a <laughs> sculpture in a very public place that everyone sees when they drive into Marin that is glorifying um, a really harmful man. Um, and it also is still not telling the history of the Miwok people, which I think is entirely the point of this and what really needs to be addressed. Um, and finally, I wanted to address the point of uh, adding more art. And I think that public art is wonderful and I think that's a great idea, but uh, to echo what a, a few comments ago uh, someone said, you know, you really need to take that statue down. You can't just add other art around it. Um, and I also think that at this moment, while we're really thinking about the racial inequities in Marin, it would be harmful to spend all of this money on public art when we haven't fully addressed the racial and like socioeconomic equity issues in Marin and that that money would be better spent supporting indigenous people in Marin, supporting other marginalized communities in Marin. And before you guys start some million dollar art project, you should really be focused on those people who, and those inequities that are really important to think about right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Lucina, I think she's up, but have, I think you've spoken already. Have you spoken already? Lucina? Hi. Yeah, I, think I can make it brief if, or a one-liner. Yes, make it brief because I want to make sure everybody at least gets a first chance. Okay, Google Coast Miwok Monument on Facebook and go to www.marinmiwok.com. Thank you. Great. Thanks. I'm, All right. All right. I'm learning Bye. a lot. I really appreciate that. Um, yes, G Gabe had a question. Yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge, uh, I think, uh, Lucina and Mia and Caitlin and everybody that, you know, I came into this meeting largely thinking we're going to talk about the statue, but it's almost like a Miwok Life Matters you know, Miwok Lives Matter. And I, I really appreciate that point and, and all the resources and thoughts you brought. So thank you. Who's up next, uh, Allison? All right now we have Ariane. It's your turn for public comment. Hi, I'm Ariane. Thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. That's <laughs> unusual. Um, I am in favor of taking the statue down. Um, I think a lot of people have brought up some really good points. Um, as a therapist, I just want to say that um, I went to school at Dominican University. The diversity in Marin is seriously lacking and um, it affects people. It affects them uh, deeply and leaving a statue up that represents, as everyone says, colonizers and people who were violent um, and rapists and all kinds of horrific um, actions towards indigenous people um, is pretty triggering for the everyday person to drive by it, walk by it. Um, 
if anyone has experienced any kind of sexual assault, um, any kind of um, assault, um, they wouldn't want to have that as a representation of Marin County. Um, I know it exists in Marin County. Um, I worked for many organizations in Marin County. Um, so I'm, I'm well aware of, you know, the domestic violence issues here and um, the sexual assault issues. So it just seems odd that if so many people, especially women, um, have been bringing up how offensive a statue is um, where he's not wearing pants and is carrying a sword. Um, to me, it, it shows that, you know, if someone's so triggered by it that it doesn't matter. Um, and I don't think that that's necessarily the message that we want to send people. We want people to be able to step forward and um, use their voice. And I feel like it's a very, um, I don't know, it's a very clear message what the statue represents. I'm not sure about the artist. I haven't looked into his work. Um, I just think that the fact that he's saying it's an event, uh, not just Sir Francis Drake, I'm not sure what event would be uh, worthwhile saving there. Um, and if you just keep the statue, I just, I just want to say that, you know, if you had a family member or ancestors or anyone that, or even yourself has been attacked or um, had something, you know, happen to them that just brutalized them and traumatized them, why would you want um, a statue of that in your home, you know, in your neighborhood, in your community? And environment matters, I think, um, to Lauren's point about it being so close to San Quentin, uh, when people are learning so much about how slavery is still existing in 2020 with the prison system. I mean, it just sends the wrong message, I think, for our future generation. Um, I'm biracial. Um, I chose after my son was born to move out of Marin County, to be honest, um, because of the lack of diversity. Um, so. Thank Not you, Fran. Yeah. Thank you for your comment. We're, we're running through to your, the time, and I want to make sure everybody gets a chance. So thank, thank you very much for your comment. Madam Mayor, I just want to acknowledge that the uh, image of a conqueror is not necessarily what our values may be intending to project. And I think that was what the, uh, com the previous speaker was trying to convey. Brandon uh, Johnson, you're up next. Hello, Brandon. Hey, hey can you hear me? Yes, we can. Tell cool. us, tell us where, what city you live in. Yeah, I live in I live in Forest Knolls, um, and I'm alumni of, of Drake High School as well. I just want to say um, thank you all for showing up, for speaking, um, for standing up for Indigenous lives, Black lives. Um, for um, victims of assault as well. Um, I think that's, that's important too. Um, yeah, I, I think that it's, it's key to remember that, that this has a lot to do with trauma. We heard from um, Lucinda, the stories going down generation after generation um, of Sir Francis Drake and this repeated trauma um, of colonization. And I think whether, you know, whether the, the artist intended it to be the uh, commemorating this discovery of California, I mean, that's just as problematic, right? Um, and if it is Sir Francis Drake, then for all the reasons stated before, that's extremely problematic as well. Um, and obviously with the information that folks are going to give you guys, you guys are going to be able to see that as well, and I have no doubt about that. Um, I think it's important to note that because Sir Francis Drake uh, is a symbol of white supremacy, um, when, when you're surrounded by those symbols and this kind of selective version of history, um, like a few of the callers have talked about, it becomes this form of socialization, okay? And that's really where the, the big issue is. And so, um, it becomes this kind of self-perpetuating, um, uh, self-reinforcing um, mechanism of white supremacy. And the best friend of supremacy is also inferiority, right? 
So um, racial inferiority, the indigenous, um, obviously, Sarantz Drake being uh, involved in the slave trade, inferiority, inferiority of black lives as well. Um, and so that's, that's continuing trauma. I can't separate seeing this Francis Drake name. I'm an African-American. I can't separate seeing this Francis Drake name from um, visualizing my ancestors in chains. That just, that, that comes up. Uh, no matter how I repackage um, Sir Francis Drake, that association is there. And so I just want um, to make it clear that there's repeated trauma here. And so the longer it takes to move through this, the more repeated trauma there's gonna be. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you for your, um, your personal comments there too. I appreciate it. I'm learning a lot from all of you. Um, Gabe has a question of you, Brandon, if you're still there. Oh, I think he went off. Oh, there he is. Yeah, Brandon, yeah, I, yeah, I wanted to really thank you for your comment. I'm, you know, thinking to myself as a council member, I don't really want to adjudicate history or adjudicate art and all its ambiguities, but your comment about inferiority is, is very powerful. And I'm looking for something that, you know, unifies our community and the reversal of feelings of inferiority sticks in my mind. So I want to thank you again for that. Yeah, thanks, thanks for lending me your ear. Vero uh, Perry, it looks like, is next. Vero? Hi. Hi, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, thank you for taking my call. I grew up in San Anselmo. I moved to San Anselmo recently. I've studied Latin American studies and I have an undergraduate degree and also in public space and public art. And I just wanted to briefly say that the public space is a canvas for the collective identity. And if we can use and harness the collective space, the, collect the public space with a new statue that represents healing so that people who feel that this statue triggers them because it is a representation of of colonialism and genocide that that is a huge step towards collective healing and i just want to express that it's a very powerful the public space is a very powerful tool to express what we want for our future and the wave of healing is 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 upon us so i think if we can we can make this happen and put something there that speaks to the voices of healing and reparations that i i would like to support that thank you what what do you think of that first comment that we had about creating a um i think it, i can't remember who said it a learning committee and invite um, the Coast Miwok and other people to contribute ideas. Definitely. That's, that's definitely, the, I would, that would be the principal step, the first step. Okay. Looks like we have um, um, Cindy Winter up next. Hello, City Council. I have a letter in the file, so I'm not going to repeat what I said there. But I was listening to all the comments about the clothes that the statue is wearing. And this book was published in 1600, the book, The Imperious Gentleman Don Quixote of La Mancha. And in those days, that is what gentlemen wore when they sent, set out to a, on a voyage or an errand of some part. And Gustave Doré and Honoré Daumier, who illustrated the book later in the 1800s for um, the French people at the time, they used the same type of clothing. And the, the lack of pants on this statue, the gentlemen of those days wore tights. This statue was clothed, he was clothed as people back in those days. So you can interpret the statue as you want, but I think when the artist contrived it in his mind, 
he was thinking of these visual images from the past. And that's all I'm going to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. We have someone who says no Drake statue. But if you'd like to introduce yourself, you're welcome to. We're all reasonable people here, so. Yes, hi, thank you so much. Yes, hi, thank you so much for taking my comment. Thank you. My name is Chloe Erskine. Hi, Chloe. Uh, I just changed my name just in case you didn't get to me um, to get the message across. Oh, and, I see. Yeah, um, I'm a public school teacher. I was raised in Marin and I currently work in Oakland. I just jumped over to this meeting um, from the Oakland School Board special meeting right now. Oh. Also in line to give a comment there too about our facilities used for next year and funding for uh, our most vulnerable students. Now, I was not a vulnerable student. I grew up um, with two loving parents in Mill Valley. And when I was nine years old and we did the like, sort of like, like history lesson where you got to dress up as someone, I dressed up as Sir Francis Drake. And I did a whole report on him. And I learned the nine-year-old version of who this person was. And I thought like, that's really cool. I want to sail around the world. That was literally what I took away from that report. I was like, this guy went sailing and he found new places. That's cool. Now I teach history. 20 years later, literally, to a couple months. And I'm 29 years old. And this man does not belong on the side of our streets. His name does not belong on Sir Francis Drake Boulevard. Um, I, I really echo the sentiments of the public, public commenter who said that the statue will, has triggered women who, and people who have experienced domestic violence, for example, which I didn't even think of until she said that. I'm learning here just like all of you too. And it's, it's just the important and right thing to do to take the statue down. There are so many other things that we could be memorializing and celebrating in, in Larkspur, a place that I really love. It's still my favorite place to take the ferry. Um, more fun than Sausalito, because there's not as many tourists. Um, and there's more you know, beautiful open space there. But I do not feel the need to see that, to see that statue of a person who ran slave ships, um, a person who was violent towards people who are indigenous to the land that we are all on right now, even though I'm across the bay in Oakland. Um, and that is what I have to say. I see the rest of my time. Have a good Thank evening. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks. Mike N. Hello, Mike. Oh, hi. Um, well, uh, not to be devil's advocate here, because I, in, in a lot of ways, really do mean this, but I really think you should keep it. I think you should keep it, and I think you should put whites only a sign next to it. I think you should put whites only signs all throughout the county to reflect the racism that is in Marin County. And I think that people should feel free to express their racism so that we know who uh, we want to uh, patronize and who we want to spend our money with and, and who we want to talk to, you know? So I, I think that racists are irrational people. And I think that if we try to rationalize anything, we can come up with an excuse for anything for why we uh, put things out uh, on the streets that are 30 foot tall. You know, it's, okay. it's the point to express domination. And one other thing before I go, I think I still have some time here and I do want to uh, express this because I mean this sincerely. Um, the conquistadors were known for raping nine-year-old girls. I'd like to know which one of you council members would like to offer your daughters a rape and have somebody Mike. put up a symbol for it. Yeah, Mike, it's, 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 we need to be a little, I, I, hear what you're saying but i think we need to um keep this at a higher level thank you for your comments looks like larry chu is uh and has his hand raised next larry i think larry, larry needs to unmute larry you need to unmute yourself Hello? Hello. Can you hear me now? Larry, you're not you're not coming across very clearly. Not coming. How about now? Uh, it's a very, little better. Get, get, get little, closer to a microphone. It's very yeah. faint. Very faint. Okay, I'm gonna speak up That's as better. loud as I can. Is that there you better? Go. We can hear you. Okay. 
I know I've been having trouble with my mic. Even That's loud time. enough. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep my comments real brief and keep it in kind of a greater context for, you know, you as decision makers. You know, despite our lack of diversity, we've always strived to be inclusive. And ultimately, we want to accomplish that, you know, irrespective of the different reasons for why people have objected to the statue. You know, ultimately, we need to strive not to offend and disrespect others. You know, what we saw in the district's Dixie School District discussion, for example, was seemingly, um, you know, inclusive about the inconclusive about the origins of its name. But when viewed in the social context of the day, you know, we know it evokes images of the Confederacy and what it stands for. So, you know, if there's a reason for wanting to take it down, I think we have to view it in the context of what the statue represents, irrespective of what its original intentions were by either the uh, person who, who built it or, you know, anybody in the past who is, you know, seen it evolve from you know one thing or another if in fact you know a name has really not been assigned to it we do know what it represents now i mean we probably even have a larger uh issue to deal with because you know even the name americo vespucci is now called the question because he owns slaves as well so you know this is a a, a real good time to have you know this type of discussion and I hope that Large Spur will stay on the forefront of things and, and be a leader on it. Thank you. Do you want to weigh in on uh, what Scott Kandel's initial questions were, or do you want to decline? Um, it, you know, I, I would favor taking it down. All right. Uh, it looks like w Rona uh, Weintraub is there, is up next. And I believe Rona submitted a, uh, a a um, written letter which is available to see on our uh, agenda web page. Right. Um, so I joined a little bit late. Unfortunately, I thought this meeting started at seven. So I don't know whether a lot of this has been expressed already. But, um, you know, I'm an old friend of Dennis Patton's. And I just feel it's so unfortunate that this whimsical sculpture by this local fabulous artist was ever called Sir Francis Drake. Dennis never called it that. He saw this sculpture as an explorer and an adventurer. And the sculpture certainly reminds people of Don Quixote. And you know, for people who don't know, Don Quixote was not a real person. He was a wannabe knight from La Mancha in, in Spain with a head full of fantasy and romance. And that's what Dan, Dennis Patton is like, a head full of romance and fantasy. And um, if, if, this statue, if, and if, if this statue is taken down, please don't destroy it. I mean, if you watch the film about Dennis and what he did to make this sculpture, um, it should be returned to the artist so he can do with it what what he wishes and hopefully there will be some other community that will accept it as just um, some adventurer explorer or Don Quixote and and not have these these references to jo to uh, Sir Francis Drake which we have unfortunately I was actually told at one point I don't know if it's true I was told that um, Dennis never wanted to name it but the mayor of Larkspur at that time Michael Warn Warnham was very fascinated with Sir Francis Drake. And he, uh, what I heard was he was the one who wanted to be called Sir Francis Drake. It was never the artist's intention. Thank you, Rona, for your comments. And I think there's two questions if you're still on the line there. Mm -hmm, I am. Okay, um, I think Gabe Paulson has a question, maybe. Mm. Yeah, hi, Rona, thank you for your comment. Um, you know, Rona, since you're sort of speaking the voice of Joan and Georgette and others who really want to affirm the artistic value. And you've probably heard all the comments about how, you know, this is triggering and traumatizing and offensive to others. How do you reconcile with the other side? So you were saying maybe take it down. What are your feelings about, you know, uh, how to address the issues that the other side brought up? Well, what I would, you know, the, the main thing I would really want is for people to understand that that's not who this was. 
that's not who it was intended to be, you know, have this on the front page of the IJ and very well publicized and then have some kind of a ceremony, you know, taking that name off of it. The name's not even on it, I don't think. I don't think the name is anywhere on it. Um, but, you know, it, it, it sounds like people are so upset and so traumatized by this, which I, I can't understand, really. It's an abstract sculpture of, you know, this wannabe knight. Um, I think it should be returned. It should be taken down and returned to Dennis Patton. And then hopefully he would find some other place to erect the statue where it doesn't have this kind of connotation. It's a fabulous piece of art. He's the same one that did the Sleeping Lady in um, Bonaire Shopping Center. And he's done a lot of other things. Yeah. Scott, you, have, you had a question, follow-up question for Rona? Uh, no, it was the same as James. thanks. Hi. Um, so we have Sophia is up next. Hi, um, I spoke briefly in the beginning and um, I wasn't even thinking of chiming in actually, but I've been really moved by just what I've heard tonight and how people have talked about their personal experiences of, you know, experiencing racism in, Mar in Marin and how much people had to work to go outside of the educations they received in public school to understand the true history of the place where we live. Um, and I, I want to say also one thing that I keep hearing is that Miwoks used to live here. I think that's one of the greatest lies that I was ever told in school. I was taught to believe that Indians did not exist anymore and they weren't any left. And that's just not true. And I think we need to acknowledge that there are Miwoks in Marin. This is unceded land, you know, like Indians are here and it's offensive to say they're not. And I do find it very frustrating to continually hear people defend the statue using words like adventure, explore, which to me like is such an obvious euphemism to cover up the violence of the actions that people like Sir Francis Drake did. You know, we didn't have the Confederacy in California, but we had Spanish and British colonizers. And I, you know, it is part of a legacy of basically like a West Coast version of a Confederate monument. And so I think it's really, really clear what the right thing is to do. And I really want to echo everyone who's talked about healing, um, who's talked about a trauma that just keeps continuing. And I think that we can create a healing gesture and we can take a stand and say, we're going to see white supremacy for what it is. Thank you, Sophia. Looks like we have on a hand, uh, Robert Ovetz. I hope I pronounced that correct. You did, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I am a professor of political science at San Jose State University, and uh, I live in uh, the San Geronimo Valley, and my daughter goes to Drake High School. And I've been listening to many of the people so far who called in, um, and I think that very clearly, I think for you as elected representatives of Larkspur, um, the public sentiment is overwhelmingly uh, for removing the statue. And I think that, you know, without having to repeat what uh, very articulate things that many people have already said, I think the issue before you uh, to consider is uh, what kind of action can you as a council take to facilitate um, an action that represents how serious uh, you take the issue of racism in Marin. And, and I, I truly appreciate uh, that you have taken this time uh, out of your busy days to listen to your constituents and other residents of Marin. Um, and I would encourage you to uh, expedite uh, your efforts by um, waiving or suspending any of the rules in order to pass an ordinance in order to take this very uh, firm uh, and clear action uh, that Larkspur stands against this history of racism um, by um, removing uh, the statue um, and also joining the effort to rename uh, Sir Francis Drake Boulevard and to rename uh, Drake High School. Uh, so thank you for your time and listening to everyone. Um, you find a way to uh, expedite and take quick action on this issue to demonstrate, as somebody said a while back, uh, that the council is on the right side of history. Thank you, Robert. Do we, I see no other further raised hands. I want to give people who are still listening uh, to this meeting a chance who haven't spoken yet. 
Um, now's your time. Uh, if you want to raise your hand and speak up or uh, you're welcome to. Okay, there I have one more person. Joe, you're our last speaker tonight. Are you, can you be unmuted? Joe, can you unmute yourself? How's that? There you go. Thank you. Welcome. You're Thank our last you. speaker tonight. Uh, my name is Joe Sanchez. Uh, my family has been in Nicasio, Tomas Bay for literally thousands of years. I am Coast Miwok. And what I want to say is I want to thank everyone who spoke on behalf of the Coast Miwok people. Um, this is a long time coming and uh, we've been through a lot. And to see now the uh, attitude of so many people, it's just, it's heartwarming. I, I'm just so thrilled with the reception um, that people have uh, come forward with. And it really uh, means a lot to me and my family. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Joe, for, for that. I think that's a really uh, a good last comment that we've had tonight. Um, so I think we've had a lot of people call in and speak up and write in. So I think it's an appropriate time for us to um, sort of close the public comment and bring it back to um, the council for some further questions of our city manager or of our city attorney and then a little bit more dialogue on it. Um, I would like to just sort of ask a practical question and that is we had to get uh, back in the 1980s or 90s they had to get a BCD, is it a BCDC permit um, to put this uh, sculpture where it is. Is there a regulatory process to remove or do we know? We don't currently have an answer. We've put in a question to BCDC to ask them if we will need to get a regulatory approval to remove the statute. So if that's a decision that, um, so just, it might help the audience if you it just took a minute to explain what rules we have to follow along the Bay Shore for construction or uh, earth moving or anything like that. So um, BCDC is the San Francisco Bay Conservation and Development, um, <coughs> excuse me, Corporation, uh, Commission, excuse me. And uh, they're the primary regulatory body in this case when you do work in and around the Bay shoreline. Uh, you need to go through them. Um, quite frankly, I'm not convinced they would approve this statue installation in 2020 um, because they've gotten a lot stricter um, about uh, this type of work in and around the Bay Shore. And um, we're just not clear from the documentation that we received in the permit approval whether or not we also need uh, approval to remove it because the original permit didn't contemplate that we would ever ask to remove the statue. Um, so we've put in the question and we haven't heard back. Uh, if, there, if the council desires to have the statue removed and there's a process, we'll report back how long we think that process would take. I, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, and and the is guys there anything else that would be helpful in elaborating on that or no i think that that i agree with dan's summary um at this point we just don't know what the process is obviously it, it's not a major project um with permanent construction uh along the shoreline but um we also it's not immediately known uh whether bcdc will require a permit at all or what the process would be and so we'll just have to wait until we hear back from them. Um, it may be also that they would actually need to know exactly what we would plan to do in terms of the mechanics of the removal in order to process it. But once we, but once we hear back from them, we'll have a better idea of what they need to give us a firmer answer. And, and if I could just add, add Madam Mayor, I think the last point that Sky made is actually the most important. I think in all likelihood, they will want us to just explain how we will go about removing the statue. If we decide that, yes. If we decide that, yes. yes. Madam, Madam, Mayor. Ma Madam Mayor, it's, it, uh, it's, uh, it's Kevin. Um, and those are all good points and they relate to an administrative process that we'll have to go through to implement whatever decision that the council 
uh, makes regarding the disposition of, of this um, uh, piece of art. Um, but I don't think that any of that should be a, an impediment to us deciding what to do about it from a public policy point of view. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll figure, I guess my point is, if we have to, we'll work with them and we'll figure it out. Madam Mayor, I would just also like to clarify that I serve as a commissioner on the Bay Conservation and Development Commission, uh, along with the mayor of Napa representing the four North Bay counties. So I think we'll get a fair representation. Okay, it's just, you know, we... Um, we're counting on you, Dan. <laughs> we're, we're working through regulatory means that for, are environmentally protective of the Bay, and I just needed to make sure that that was clear to people that um, we do have to follow certain um, environmental protections for our community as well, so, um, which are unclear at this point, apparently. So who, who would like to uh, sort of summarize what they've heard and think about um, our next steps going forward? Seems like we had a lot of really, a lot of really good ideas coming across about learning a lot more about um, about our Marin history, and I, I appreciate everyone's comments about that because I'm learning every day as we go through this. Anyone else want? To, yeah, Gabe. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think I, I came into this meeting, you know, not sure what the opinions were. Three things stand out for me. Uh, probably foremost really is, is the Miwok history um, and, and uh, the different offers that people have made to have a learning group. I, I think removing the statue or renaming it or, or whatever the decision is, is important, but what has really happened here is a bit of consciousness raising and, and I'd love to see that as part of, of whatever we implement. Uh, and the second is, you know, this notion, I think our two former mayors, uh, Mayor Lundstrom and, and Mayor Chu, who spoke as public citizens, summarized the spectrum for me. I think you know, Mayor Lundstrom really emphasizes the importance of art and the preservation of art and the respect of art. And, you know, the, the notion of having a ceremony and taking this down so that we're not destroying something, but we're really affirming different values. I, I find that to be very helpful. And then what Mayor Chu said, you know, we are not the most diverse county, but we want to be the most inclusive county. And I think another gentleman, you know, who said about inferiority feelings, you know, I, I think I'm on the Council for Public Safety and for Public Works, but this is an opportunity for public healing. And, and I really hope that we take this uh, opportunity and, and do just that. So thank you. Yes, Scott. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to start, I, I, I began uh, with a position that I didn't have a position because I wanted to learn more about Sir Francis Drake uh, so we could all have a consensus of who this person was before we decided how we wanted to handle the situation. Uh, in the course of this evening, um, that has become irrelevant to me. Uh, what has become clear to me is that regardless of who this statue is, uh, what is named, uh, it symbolizes colonialism, uh, which I think we as a society have evolved to a point where that's probably not something we want to celebrate. Uh, and it probably does not belong where it is. Not that it's not a beautiful piece of artwork, not that it wouldn't belong, as they find a great home for it someplace else. Uh, the artist could find a home for it someplace else. Uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, representative of our values. Um, I would, I don't know if it's appropriate, I'd be fine to make a motion um, to deal with it at this point. Uh, I don't know if people need to think about this or digest it or have further listening sessions. I'm, I'm comfortable with, you know, my position on this and I'll be ready to vote on it tonight if, if uh, the council so chooses. Ma Madam Mayor, I'm, uh, this is a workshop, so I, I think, um, I mean, this is maybe just a, a point of technicality. For the city manager but since it is a workshop i'm not sure that tonight is the time to make motions um but that was my question what where are we going from here in terms of of process well i think we get to decide what that is i i i hear you scott about that um 
having this as a, a workshop allowed a lot of voices to come forward. Generally in workshop sort of formats, this is uh, an opportunity for many voices to be heard to hear about this and then others to step forward for, for sometimes the next conversation because um, it allows more publicity and more conversation that gets out into the community. So others who may represent uh, another opinion would be more apt to join at, at another workshop. Um, I think what I've heard is we have a lot of learning to do and um, I'm really committed to learning a lot more about our history from multiple, multiple different perspectives. And I will admit my naivete on a lot of things like this, but I appreciate how many of our commenters um, were willing to share uh, articles and willing to share books and materials and people to share their stories so that we can all learn a lot more. Um, as far as, Mayor. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm sorry I need to interrupt. Okay. No, I was just going to ask you, if, if we're not in a position to make a motion or to vote on this tonight, could I ask before we uh, conclude this meeting that we agendize this on a future meeting so that, you know, if people have other voices, they have notice where they can be heard, and we have a, a kind of a drop dead date where we have to make a decision one way or another. I just don't want to punt this off into the future, that's all. So how do you reconcile that with our need to find out through the regulatory agency if this is, um, if we have to do an additional step or, or provide um, additional material to them before we can be permitted to do anything? So Madam, Madam Mayor, it's, it's, it's Kevin. I, my, my suggestion, I think kind of following up with what Scott was suggesting is that we make a request for uh, the city manager to prepare a proposal that would outline a process that would um, anticipate the removal of the statue, um, and it, and explain in that context, you know, the different regulatory issues that may need to be addressed in that context. Well, can I can I ask, uh, would it be proper for us to take a straw poll to see where we all are on this? Because I would hate to send Dan on some you know journey of finding no, out things yeah. if I'm by myself here. And I'm the only one that wants to dig it down. No, no, no. I think that's, I, th again, Kevin, I, I think that's perfectly appropriate. Madam Mayor, I would yeah. request that the city manager advise us on the process that he would see uh, addressing these questions. Uh, thank you. Is that all right, Madam Mayor? Sure. Um, the city attorney can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think... Uh, there's legislative action beyond a direction from the council that your desire is for the statute to come down. Um, I think I would be surprised if whatever permit process we have to go through with BCDC has to come back to you other than as an information item. Uh, so I do think uh, the council could essentially uh, indicate its desire one way or the other with respect to the statute and quite a bit of what the staff would then do would be ministerial. Um, we simply, in responding earlier to the mayor's question, wanted to be clear that uh, we don't think we could do it tomorrow. We, we uh, setting aside the logistics, we just need to make sure we check every box before we would do something if that's the desire of the council. The only thing that I would add is uh, we may need to evaluate uh, to some degree what the, again, what sort of the actual mechanics of removal would mean so that we can make a determination about whether or not any sequel review would be required, which would have to be done prior to a final decision by the city council. Um, but I think that if you come out of the meeting tonight with um, some preliminary direction, but not a final decision to uh, direct the city manager to come back to you with um, a report uh, with a with a summary of what the process would be and, and any additional actions that are necessary to um, finalize um, that direction um, that, that we could we could move forward with that and then plan to come back to you with, with the final package along those lines. And I would I would encourage that approach. So and can I can I recommend I'm sorry go ahead. So my, my feeling is this is a this is a very, um, a very um, tense moment in our 
national history as well as our local conversations about people and places um, at the same time as we're all living through a pandemic. I, I really think that this is going to be a conversation that we need to make sure everyone um, has a chance to, to participate in. We haven't heard from the artist himself. I, I'm not comfortable making a decision tonight without one more opportunity for people to, to weigh in on this, their opinion on this. So. And, and Madam Mayor, I think that's exactly the strategy that we've just been discussing. Um, I think what we're needing is some direction about how this could happen, but I don't think we're in a position to make a decision tonight. Um, so my uh, strong recommendation would be to allow the city manager to uh, work with our city attorney uh, to put together a, um, uh, a strategy for uh, addressing the options that we've been discussing this evening, and then we'll bring it back for another session at a regular city council meeting. And what are the options that you, I, what are the options that you think have risen uh, to the fore? Um, it sounds like it's pretty much three and that I've heard, which is um, leave it as it is, rename it, uh, add more for add more um, public art or removal. Did you hear any more options? I heard a much more varied range of, of considerations in the conversation, so I would like to hear more information as uh, described by Vice Mayor Harrow. Yeah, I think. Can I make I, a I, recommendation? I, 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 I'm yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Just uh, again, I think what I had in mind was um, uh, a a. a agendizing this as council member Kendall suggested uh, for a future city council meeting um, with a couple of different uh, options. Um, we can talk about what the recommended recommended option might be. I certainly have a strong view about that myself, but um, you know, we do that all the time. So um, I don't think that should be uh, all that, all that complicated. And then we can have a vote. And can I, uh, can I ask uh, when, uh, uh, city manager uh, gives us that report. Uh, could we please have a rough price tag of what we're talking about, uh, the procedure that'll take and, and estimated costs? Because I don't, I don't know exactly what we're talking about here, but if it's something astronomical, that may be a consideration that we have to, uh, to think about. Um, some of that will depend on, on whether the statute is to be preserved. Uh, to be honest, because we've already had some preliminary evaluation. We're having a difficult time finding a contractor that will even talk about this if they have to be certain they'll preserve the statute. Um, it, it was quite an effort from what I understand to install it and removing it uh, while trying to preserve it, it will involve bringing in a crane. It will involve uh, quite a bit of uh, reverse engineering. It can be done, but just want the council to be aware of that. Uh, please, include, ask, please include the cost estimates for removal. And restoration. And, and I guess so my, my, go ahead. I just, I just, just want the council to be aware. Um, we have an obligation to confer with the artist, but you, but the city owns the statute. So um, perhaps if I'm following the same train of thought as Councilmember Candell, I don't know what the appropriate expenditure of taxpayer money is to preserve the statute. And that's really a policy oh. question for you. Dan, what I would ask is if we could have two numbers, one to not preserve it and remove it, and the second to preserve it and remove it. Uh, and maybe we could talk to the artist, uh, and there may be some private money that might be available. Uh, if the artist would like to preserve this, would like to put it someplace else, I would love to, I don't want to destroy somebody's art, you know, if there is an option, you know, the artist has some place to put it, has the means to restore it, all those things, I'm just not sure that would be the responsibility of the taxpayers. But again, we would have to see those numbers to, to really understand what we're talking about. Well, I, I would just ask that the, the artists be involved in that conversation. Well, we can do our best. Our first, uh, you know, this is our first 
workshop uh, to bring up this conversation, which is why I think we have a lot, a little bit more um, investigative work to do to make sure that we're being reasonable and spending money wisely also. So go ahead, Dan, you were gonna say something? We can do our best to come up with those two numbers. Thank you. So uh, Gabe, is there anything you wanna add? Uh, just a clarification, it sounds, you know, I came in thinking there were three options, it sounds like there are five. So, you know, on the removal, there's remove and preserve, just remove and destroy, or just, you know, not worry about it. Uh, add more art, um, rename and keep, or just keep as is. You know, I mean, just, just so we, you know, resolve the possibilities. And to Scott's point, I, I do feel that we, we don't want to postpone the decision. And to your point, Mayor, I, I don't think we are. But I, I'm appreciative of this discussion, and I don't think it's punting into the future to have uh, further discussion, especially if it includes the artist and possibly Miwok and other, you know, concerned members. I think Dan, you had something. Yeah, I would appreciate really clear direction from the council about whether you want the option explored of additional art. I think that that actually is a very complicated question with a number of regulatory agencies. Uh, the regulatory world is very different in 2020 than it was in 1990. Yeah, I, I don't think we're at that level of, um, I mean, this is, I would, I'd like to keep this conversation narrowed to this particular object. Um, I would love to see more public art. I just don't think we can um, engage that in, within the same geographic area at this moment because of all the regulations we'd have to go through too. Um, are people comfortable with that? That we're this is really about this one specific. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. So um, I, I'd like to go back to the suggestion um, that I think Council Member uh, Kandel had, which is to at least have some kind of a straw poll uh, expression of uh, of a direction that the council wants to go. I mean, I know I have strong views about it. I think other members of the council do as well. Um, and if we could at least get that direction tonight, I think that would be helpful in providing some clarity for um, uh, for our city manager and um, city attorney to, to go to the next step. All so right. Well, um, that would be my suggestion. We can do that. I, I, I'll begin. I'm, I'm haven't, um, I haven't heard enough yet. I've heard a lot of really powerful things, but I need a little bit more of the practical nature to be able to make a fiduciarily responsible decision. So I'll remain neutral on this one right now. Anybody else have a... Fair enough. Uh, because I, if we get a price tag of $500,000, I, I just think we just need a little bit more information. I so appreciate the comments that people have, have given us. It's really in my eyes to a lot of our community that I don't know as much as I need to know about. But would you like to conduct the poll, Kevin? So well, that's I, <laughs> uh, um, um, well, you're the mayor, so you get to do that. Right. Um, uh, but I'd, I'd be happy to I'd be happy to express my views. I think the statue needs to go for a variety of different cultural, sociological, and historical reasons. It's not appropriate and needs to go, and we need to figure out a way to make it make that happen. Um, so uh, we can work out the administrative process that needs to allow that to occur. Um, but I personally think I've uh, heard enough. So, so if, I, if I could. Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Just, just to comment, what I heard the city manager state is he's looking for as concrete directions as possible from us. So I'm going to suggest that we ask uh, the city manager to find out two things. One is the process and cost of removal without uh, worrying about saving the art. And the second is the process and cost of removal with preserving the art, restoring the art at a different location. Uh, and, and I don't know if it would be the city manager's job, but I think somebody should contact the artist uh, and because if there's a difference between those two prices and that difference is significant and we as a city council don't feel that it's our, you know, responsibility to do that, which again, this is just, you know, we may or may not agree, 
but I would like to have all the ammunition that we need so at the next meeting we can make a decision. I would like to know if there is a difference, if the artist or some other foundation would be willing to foot that bill so that we could move this statute to the place of the artist's preference and it not be uh, financially draining to the city to a point where, where it's not practical. And, and I, I appreciate that. I just want to be clear. I'm not putting a, I'm not putting a dollar amount on the pain um, and the true emotional um, uh, comments that we've heard from people tonight. I'm just trying to make sure that we are um, being good fiduciaries of the tax dollars and get all the information before we finalize a decision. That, that's where I'm coming yeah, from. Yeah, and, and, and Madam sure. Mayor, that I, I'm not saying anything inconsistent with that. Um, uh, I think the suggestion was to get a sense of the council about the overall direction that we want to go. And I think it's important um, if folks are inclined um, to provide that uh, provide that sense if we can um, uh, tonight. There are all kinds of details that would have to be worked out, what different options might be, whether the, what the artist wants to do, whether it could be relocated, all that kind of stuff. But I think we do have um, uh, an opportunity tonight to express a collective view about whether it's appropriate to maintain this statue in that location. However, it it, whatever the ultimate disposition of it may be, we'll figure that out. But I do think it's important for us to provide some sense of things if we can tonight. Does that make sense? Uh, is that more clear to you, Dan? Uh, Madam yes. Mayor? Yes, Madam. Yes, Dan Hilmer. Yes. Uh, I, I would also like to include as, as practical uh, an opportunity to uh, invite how we might best express our values and intentions at this location uh, as a uh, gateway to Marin. So if there's any way to invite the opportunity, I know we won't be able to ask uh, artistic uh, inquiries here. So I, I would just like to leave open the opportunity to what we might do to best uh, uh, express our values at this location in light of the fact that we might be removing uh, something here. And I, I also want to recognize the fact that the, the, the statue of the that we're all talking about is something that has taken place uh, in quite a happenstance environment. Now, there was a series of decisions here that were uh, maybe uh, not so focused on the things we're focused on today. And given the, the fragmentation of all those decisions, I think there's an opportunity here to focus on what we might want to send a message about relative to Marin and our society in general. So I think there's a great uh, opportunity here that we should really take advantage of. And this being uh, our first workshop and hearing directly from uh, the public about this particular idea um, will now allow the opportunity for us to um, to have this resonate throughout the community and get some of those ideas forward too. All right, can I ask a question? Uh, I as a single city council member I don't believe have the authority to ask our city manager to do anything without a, uh, uh, the approval of the rest of the city council. My thought was to ask the city manager to find those two things out, uh, the cost and process of removal with preservation, the cost and process of removal without preservation. Can I ask the city council if uh, you approve of that recommendation for the city manager? Gabe? Right. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say um, in the straw poll and uh, to, to your point, um, Scott, is I concur with, uh, with, with uh, Councilman Haroff and with yourself. Um, I, I just want to amplify uh, that the, you know, the discussion of what we're trying to replace this with is important, as well as making sure that we've heard all our constituents. Uh, the people tonight have been very moving and very vocal 
and I, I really want to make sure that we've heard everyone because it's a, it's an important topic that's come up, and then the financial aspect as well. So short answer is yes, I think that's good direction. I hope we can follow that, and sort of to to uh, Mayor Way's point, I, I hope we can have more discussion, and it's not seen as as procrastination, but really to to evolve this because it's a big topic. I endorse that. And also, I, I, I think we need to, and I, I'm really pleased we had Mr. Sanchez as our closing speaker because um, he's, this is allowing a lot of voices to come to public process that haven't been heard before. And I appreciated uh, many of the comments that uh, I think people are participating on a level that um, will help to engage other members of our community in ways they haven't been engaged before, if that makes sense. Because um, this is a, we tend to sometimes in public um, process in Larkspur and other smaller cities kind of look at narrower topics. And this is opening up a much broader topic to the, the larger community. And um, I would like to encourage more of them to participate with us. And, and Madam Mayor, if I could, just, just as a reminder, because I think we're kind of coalescing around a little bit of a direction here. Um, um, but the other issue that's lurking in the background is the the naming of um, the of Sir Francis Drake Boulevard. That's not we're not we're not addressing that here. We're only talking about the statue right now, and we're going to have a separate conversation. As Council Member Kendall noted, we've already been participating in that conversation, but it is a separate conversation, and we'll bring a lot of these issues out. But our our task really is to determine for the people in our community, the residents in our, of our community, the disposition of this statue. And we don't have to decide that now, but I'm getting a sense of, of, a, of a consensus that we need to explore um, uh, how we could possibly remove the statue. Is there anything else you need from us tonight at this initial workshop? Um, no, Madam Mayor, I, understand. I have directions. Okay, so just for the benefit of the public who may still be listening, um, we, uh, to summarize, um, we really appreciate your uh, participation tonight and uh, we will agendize this again and encourage um, more voices to come forward and uh, offer their thoughts and opinions on it. While we, at the meantime, we're getting some more practical information about process, um, costs, and, um, uh, the practicalities of matters. That's an important part of city governance, too. So, um, Madam um, Mayor. Yes. May I thank our council members, all of them, to uh, how they've addressed this issue. It's, it's sort of a new uh, threshold for our, our city council to be talking about these things. I just want to be, I just want to express my gratitude to council members Kandel, Paulson, Hera, uh, for everything they've done to reach out to a broader segment of the community, bring these issues into focus for, for Larkspur. And I'd, I'd also like to thank the public who's participated tonight and uh, for their patience in how we try uh, through this crazy Zoom type of meeting to try to engage in sensitive and um, topical matters when we can't be in the same room together and we can't um, have those nuances of language and speech and body movement that we usually get within conversations like this. So we're trying our hardest and we're really learning a lot. And uh, to close, I'd like to make sure that the people who have material that they wanna continue to, um, to bring forward that will help us all be educated um, in ways that we haven't had a chance to in the past, they can, they're welcome to send it uh, to the city council here, and we can take a look at those materials too. I'd like to learn um, as much as I can. Uh, so if we don't have any other um, thing on our agenda tonight, uh, sounds like we will put this. I, I, I would just like to close with one thing to correct uh, the city manager's initial impression of what I have on my head. Uh, <laughs> it's not It's not a gamer's headset. <laughs> it's a Zoomer's headset, so. So for, for the public um, who's still online, um, we have two council meetings a, a month. Uh, Janu the July one is already agendized. So look forward to um, paying attention to when this matter will come up. 
uh, and you can subscribe to the city's website, alert me now type of uh, newsletter and get um, pinged when these kind of meetings will come up and uh, let your uh, constituent, your friends and family also who would be participating in topics that we haven't yet heard, um, bring them forward too. And at that, I think uh, we will adjourn this public workshop for tonight um, and look forward to speaking about this issue when we, uh, again. Any other closing remarks? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have nothing more to say. Thank you everyone for participating. Um, and I look forward to continuing this very important conversation. Good night, everyone. All right, have a good, good night, night everybody.